I want to go over some simple details that can make a huge difference in your landscaping and retaining wall work outside. This is Nathan again with Rebuild the Block. We have a great product that we use. It's WR Meadows Mel Drain. Uh, for short, we call it Dimple Board. And you'll see here, um, ultimately it's a, it's a drainage mat that we're able to install in between a large planter bed that's gonna get an extensive amount of watering. So in this case, we have a huge ficus hedge that's running around the property for, for privacy. And as you can see in this particular mat, there's all these little dimples in here and you can see them on the backside as well. So as we pull this up, there's all these dimples that are behind this felt mat. And so the felt goes up against the dirt and then our, our vapor barrier, as well as the polystyrene backing Backs to, the, uh, backs to the block work. And so ultimately what happens is that it allows uh, water to be able to seep through and then down to the bottom of the retaining wall. And this helps with two different things. The first thing it helps with is efflorescence. And efflorescence is basically mineral deposits that are left behind from water that's, that's basically passing through a masonry wall, okay? And so you see it on things like stucco, you see it on CMU block. And I'm sure that you've seen it as, as you've driven around in some areas where there's more retaining wall work, you're gonna see this like chalky calcium, calcium deposits, hard water deposits, mineral deposits on the outside of the wall. And so by doing this, it allows for the water to essentially, to have a, a barrier between the wall and the, wa and the water. So that helps to, to solve that problem. The second thing that it solves is root intrusion. In this particular box in the back, we have about a four foot area that we can be able to put this beautiful Hollywood hedge or ficus hedge. And uh, we want to make sure that over the lifespan of those uh, nice mature uh, columns, those, those ficus colum uh, columns, that roots aren't going to push our retaining wall out. And so ultimately they hit the mat, they have nowhere to go, and so they're able to uh, finish off our box and allow for uh, proper root growth uh, and uh, longevity of our exterior landscape plans. So now we actually get to see the applications of that dimple board that we talked about just brief, uh, a brief moment ago. Um, as, as you can see, we have our retaining walls built. Uh, these will be, uh, once again, for a, a, a ficus hedge. And they're gonna be watered, you know, day in and day out so that they grow and they mature. And on the back side of this wall, uh, which we'll see in a second, is, is where that drainage mat sits, that dimple board. Uh, the first process for it is for us to actually waterproof the wall. So we have a waterproof uh, roll-on membrane that, that, that essentially gets painted onto the back of the wall. We put our dimple board in place and then we were able to backfill with dirt to pressure fit it for a permanent fit. So a lot of people might ask, why do we have all these retaining walls in the backyard? And simply put, you know, we have to meet certain code requirements. And one of the ones that's been really difficult to meet is uh, the new flood retention guidelines that are adopted throughout the nation. But specifically here in Phoenix, we have a, a, a two hour, 100 year flood requirement to be able to retain that much water on our lot. And so in this particular instance, you know, we're talking you know anywhere from you know a thousand cubic feet to to four or five thousand cubic feet and many of the main reasons for that is because here in arcadia we have flood irrigated lots and so they put us to that highest standard because uh, originally all these lots retained water uh, by having uh, bermed and flood irrigation and so ultimately since we have to meet the string the most stringent of standards we go ahead and put our retaining walls in so we can be able to flatten out all of our basins and create actual utilized uh, space within the backyard uh, when you look at some of the new construction in these marketplaces, you'll see these massive swells. What I like to call them swimming pools in the front yard and the backyard. And what we do is, is we're going to go ahead and, and uh, tear us down. You know, we step down onto the patio, which is our hardscape. We come around our pool, we have our coping. And then from there, we're actually building steps that allow us to be able to terrace the property down to be able to retain that water efficiently and effectively while still retaining architectural continuity within the, within the project. Take a look around. Talk to you soon.